This technique that I'm about to show you really helped me improve my loose sketching skills. We're also going to be looking at the line work, construction, uh, how to do the watercolour wash and especially those tricky reflections in the water. So stay with me as I show you how to sketch this really interesting boat. Okay, before we get onto the technique I want to show you, we need to plan the sketch. So here on this template you can see I have dots. So we can put two dots for the height in the middle and then we can go across one and a half dots to the, the width, one and a half dots to the width. So let's start in the middle here, put a dot for the height, the bottom there. Then we go across one and a half and that has to be on a bit of an angle, one and a half. And then put the same height in, okay one there, one there. So that should both be at an angle. And they're just really rough guidelines for us to sketch. Okay, now we've got our plan, let's move on to the next step, which is to outline the main shapes. So we have here, we've got two main shapes, the green section of the boat and the blue cabin there. So with this technique that I've been talking about, it's all about loosening your sketch by using one line. So what we start here, we're a little bit off from this dot here, and we're gonna go across. So this whole section here, we're gonna do in one line, just following that contour like this, and we're going up to that top dot. And then we have the side here of the boat, and we can see it comes down just about halfway, and we come in. Before we go up there, I'm gonna keep going across here, and we're just, we're just drawing the bottom section of the boat here. So in, continue the one line, and see if I wanna adjust, I just add those extra wiggles to go a bit further down, um, and that adds to that character of the sketch. Up, really nice angle up here going up into this top red section there. And you can continue the one line work with things like that anchor, and then this box here. I don't wanna get carried away, but I'll make my way down to this point here. Okay, so now we have that big main shape, and that was all in one line. We can stop and now move on to this top bit. So this corner here is in the corner right there. So we wanna make our way across to this point. So if we go up here again, and we go around those beams there, and just making sure that you're looking at everything in comparison. So one, one line sketching like this is building the shapes, but in comparison. So we're looking at other objects. So we're looking at the, the objects and the shapes around it to make sure it matches and is in proportion. And then we're going down here. So now we have the cabin and this bottom shape, and we've created in this really nice loose um, line there following the contour. Okay, so now we'll go to this top section here This is the next biggest shape that we need to do and I can see that it comes about twice This is about the same height So here to here it has to come up to about there and I'm gonna bring it out a little bit have a nice angle on that Let's start up here and let's come down again. There's something there. It's trying to capture some of that detail and it comes across like this okay, All the way to the top is something there. So you've got that shape the next thing I want to do is this pile on here. It's a bit lower than this point and it comes out at a nice angle again. So I'll put a dot about there. And so go out and back down. Very wobbly line, but that's nice. Okay, we've got the rope coming up here like this. I exaggerated how far it comes out. Okay, now we've got all the shapes in. Enough room for those reflections. We can use this one line segment technique again as we go into the detail. We'll start at the bottom and there's a bit of brown, ready brown there and it comes across. Still one line up into this section. Okay, now I'm not leaving the page as I draw this yellow section here. It's like a nice line that helps define the shape of the boat. I've drawn it a bit low there. And then I'll outline this shape here just to get that in. And there's a bit of rope there. We're doing this yellow section here and making our way up. You can go slow or fast, however you like. Now this pole here, and there's a rope coming down here, so let's go. So, and then there's a bit of detail on this side here. We've got those letters, and I can actually use my white pen later for those, so just like that. I'll we'll stop there, just that, that's probably enough. Now we'll go on to the cabin. So we'll start on this side, and we've got that, that shape there where you can see the, the trees behind. There's lots of interesting rope details here. And then we come across to here and we come down. Now we've got to make sure that we get that face there. So let's draw this edge. So draw the edge down like this. Um, metal cylinder there, windows. Continue the one line segment here, across. And then we want that yellow section so we can paint that. This little window comes like that. And then we've got these boxes here. 
Just draw them like that. Now it's looking more and more complicated. So the first thing is this little triangular shape here. Another shape there. So I'm looking at those negative shapes between these to this A-frame. Rope. I love the rope on these boats. Little flag up there. And then from here, we'll draw the rope bending down. We know where those points are now. We can draw that. And another one going up like this. I missed this. It looks like a little pipe. And then another flag pole. That looks like actually an antenna. Something like that. And then I go down there. Now the window's here. So we'll go across. And some black dots. Like rivets sort of sticking through details. So this rope here connects to these two points. So I'll do the top one first. So by using those one line segments where we did sections and we stopped and then we did another one line and we did another one line section, it really made this sketch so much more looser than it could have been if I was just joining the dots in single lines. But now we've got to get into uh, making this really colorful reference come to life on the page and how we're going to do those uh, reflections. So I'm going to show you how my technique for that. So I've got my water brush pen. What I'm going to do is just on the side here, this is just around the boat, just wet the page. This is a Panto water brush pen. You could just use around six to around nine, something like that. Cerulean blue. Now this is just a super light wash. We're starting from just a bit below there. Okay, it's down here like this, streaking it side to side with the end of your brush. We're keeping it quite light and simple. Okay, I'm actually going to now clean that out. But I have got turquoise, which is a bit of a brighter blue. So try and find your brightest blue. This is turquoise. So we're going from this side, just the blue section, and try not to go over where the yellow is. Across these beams, and there's that yellow bit there, so I try and miss there. But we can go over these yellow bits, all this detail here, it's a bit too hard to miss that. So let's push that paint over there. It can be darker on this side. Just blocking in the colors here. So we don't. I don't have exactly the right color here, but what I'm going to do is use my sap green, which is green with a bit more yellow in. And then we've got Viridian green, which has a bit of blue in it. So we're going to avoid the yellow sections again. And this is quite a light wash in the middle here. And then as we're blending across, a lot more Viridian green. I just really like the idea of color gradients. We can go across those letterings and it changes to this darker color. Okay, so now the yellow sections. So we've got cadmium yellow. So when we're doing these sections, I recommend leaving a little bit of white gaps between the colors. It gives it really nice, almost like natural highlights. Goes all the way over here and here. To get that color gradient that I was just talking about, a bit of cadmium red, which is an orangey red, and we can dab that in. Adds really nice interest. So back to the cadmium yellow. Don't have to do the whole shape. I'm just purposely leaving little bits of white here and here. There's a little bit of yellow in here. We'll go burnt sienna. Just chucking a little bit in there. Here. That cadmium red that we have before, let's do the flags. So like that, pole, whatever that is. And the tops of some of these things. See how I did that? Just overlapped, not perfectly within it. Same sort of thing. That rusty old anchor you've got there. Could also be burnt sienna. Um, now, with the, with the shadow here, I'm going to do this in three layers. So if we've got the first layer, which is the, the wash with the blue, and now we're going to do a light color wash, the same color matching that's on this on the boat. This is the Viridian green, mostly Viridian green, and just block out the shape. Now I'm not going to worry too much about the funny edge that the water makes it. Now I'm getting a bit of sap green there, so it's because it's a bit more that color over here. So we can do the same with the yellow and add that in. So I can add it in within the green that's already there. Just maybe add a little bit just into that blue. The horizontal lines, we can grab a bit of red, add a little bit of red up here. So this is the turquoise, where this opposite where the cabin is. Um, and the A-frame comes across here. So I'm just basically mirroring some of that value. We're gonna add some shadows on top of that. Talking about value, we need to add some dark windows. So this is ultramarine. So get your ultramarine and Payne's gray. Once again, let's just put in those windows. Okay, like that, go across. 
and see where there's some maybe some other little points a bit there that looks good now with this green let's add some turquoise which was the blue that I used for the cabin and that is what I'm going to use for the nets so see these nets in the background here in there we can spread that around a bit that'll, that'll be the pole so I started with the big shapes for the color now I'm going into all the little detail where the color is uh, this is the cadmium yellow we can go now that this would be well and truly dry can add some yellow around these squares a bit more saturation to some of those other yellow areas okay so I've blocked in all the basic colors now we have to do shadows and then we'll add in highlights on top okay that's all dry now we can add on shadows so for the shadows we've got ultramarine and then rose purpley color there now we just want a little bit so the light is coming down from this way so that means this side is in light there's a little bit of shadow here we've got this side here the a frame there is in in the light just the left hand side very careful here to leave that because that could be a really nice detail uh, and as you're going you can add more ultramarine in to change the color of the shadow so I'll put in a bit of shadow here just parts of it is in shadow we we'll exaggerate this shadow underneath this bit here we can also add a shadow line going under this little rim so now we have to add the shadow to this section here so this is where I'm really hoping this works out and I'm going over the top of these colors want this edge here to be broken so as I'm going along I'm making these vertical lines you can add little dots but following basically following that that edge that I made in the color let's go across these shadows you can still see the color underneath okay and then extend out from there there's other bigger sections that might have purple in them splatters with that purple and there's so much detail in the water that we can't draw but these sort of random splatters give that effect sometimes okay and we can get some more ultramarine make it a bit more that's really nice okay we are going to come back to these shadows with some highlights but i'll leave this little section dry so now i can go back to this section and just add a little bit more interesting color so viridian green and turquoise again we can add that into here and add a bit more I just feel like it needs that, that color difference there also go straight turquoise turquoise just adding it in there because so I have my old brush here so more finer splatters there to blend that out it's like a like an airbrush okay the final step is to use my Posca pen which has a fine tip and that's just to add in the details on the top so we have some of the details are lost or some of the edges are lost because of all the dark painting that we did areas like this the letters on the side here the edge of this boat here so we can do that it's things like this this edge here and that'll help that stand out a bit more hopefully what else have we got here rope here and this rope here okay let's do it the windows here just the top edge maybe yeah the final step of making this water look a bit more realistic is by drawing some glints on top on the side like this and you get a thicker line just breaking up these shapes so that's how I sketch a boat like this with using some really loose line work and the technique that we learned today was to do sections in one line it really helped me to get this kind of expressive line work but within structures within these structures of the plan that we had um, if you want the the template and the full res reference you can join my patreon for that um, we've also got the full length video there you can sketch along it's the best way to learn how to sketch sketch with me um, you can always email me questions there as well with your sketch uh, if you want to have some more exercises on this technique with sketching with one line to sketch anything I've got a fundamental tutorial right there um, it's a really great tutorial for beginners because we have basic objects that we can practice this one line sketching we've also got blind contour drawing there as well uh, very helpful before you start all these other projects but otherwise we've got lots more tutorials here on youtube for you to check out right here thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one